everyone. Today I'm going to reply to a couple comments I got in a video from that vegan couple where Natasha was talking to the three Christians. I'll leave the link below in case you want to go check it out. So my comment on the video was abortion though and this person responded a couple times and because her last comment was very long I decided to do a response video instead. She said I'm Christian, pro-life, and vegan. The ideology is to reduce and prevent innocent beings at any age from being murdered for convenience. Abortion shouldn't be happening when there are so many options to prevent pregnancy in the first place. My answer was, number one, veganism has to do with animal rights. Abortion has to do with the woman's rights. You say abortion shouldn't be happening. That is your opinion. And it doesn't change the fact that it does happen, has happened, and will continue to happen regardless of prevention methods or what you think should or shouldn't be happening. Two, I do not own anyone else's body except my own. I will not force anyone to continue with a pregnancy against their will because I am against slavery. And three, Nobody has the right to use the body of another person for his own benefit against the will of the one who is being used. Not a rapist, not a fetus. If you want to let a fetus use your body, that is your choice. But you do not have the right to force anyone else to do the same. That was the end of my response. Okay. The definition of veganism is that it is a way of a living that seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. Nowhere in this description does it talk about humans, human rights, or abortion. One subject has nothing to do with the other. So I do not understand why so many people say that it does. She says that abortion shouldn't be happening when there are so many options to prevent pregnancy. I find it ridiculous that anyone would say this knowing that no form of contraception is 100% effective. But even if they were 100% effective and a woman got pregnant and then decided to get an abortion for whatever reason, I would still support her choice because only she knows what is best for her. She goes on. That's what you and so many people sadly believe abortion is about. Abortion isn't about women's rights. Abortion is about murdering a growing baby for convenience. One. Abortion is about a woman's right to choose if or when she wants to give birth. Just because for thousands of years we were unable to exercise that right does not mean that we didn't have it. Two, nobody has an absolute right to life, not even a fetus. And three, every person has a right to remove from their body whatever they consider to be threatening or harmful to their health, their life, or their well-being. This includes removing a fetus from a uterus. And the most qualified person to decide over their body is that person. It would be very arrogant and ignorant of me to think that I have the right to choose what is best for someone else. She goes on. As biology and medical textbooks explain, mammalian life begins at conception. A new life is formed at conception when a sperm fuses into an egg. Mom DNA plus dad DNA equals separate and completely unique DNA. I know that. So what? A rapist is also a human, has his own very unique DNA, and his life began at conception. Saying that something is human is irrelevant because that factor alone doesn't give it special rights to violate the body of someone else. If a woman consents to having sex with a man, it is not a violation. If a woman consents to being pregnant, it is not a violation. The difference between something being a violation or not is consent. And consent to sex does not mean consent to being pregnant or giving birth. I get the sense that anti-choicers don't understand the meaning of bodily autonomy and consent or 
that they are against it when it comes to pregnant women. She goes on. Just because a baby is growing in a woman's womb, that doesn't give her the right or moral correctness to end it. Yes, it does. The fetus is subject to the woman, not to the woman to the fetus. She has rights over her body and everything in it. She has the right to remove a kidney or a fetus if she chooses to do so, regardless of what anyone else thinks or wants. Her body, her choice alone. She goes on. A baby still relies on the mother for food and basic necessities after birth. I don't know how this is relevant, but after the child is born, anyone can take care of it. It does not have to be the woman that gave birth to it. She goes on. At what point does a baby have his own rights and become a person? First trimester, second trimester, third trimester, only once born? One, you calling a fetus a baby doesn't make it one. Two, I personally believe that a fetus becomes a person the moment it is born, not before. As long as you are plugged in to another person, you are an extension of that person and not your own until you are disconnected. The moment they cut that cord is the moment you become a person, assuming that the fetus is viable. And three, I believe that a born person has objective rights and a fetus has subjective rights that are exclusively determined by the pregnant woman. She goes on. Thousands of people were born prematurely at less than 20 weeks old, but they grew into healthy, productive members of society. Yet millions of babies are killed at older than 20 weeks old. The difference is not the age of the fetus, but the will of the woman. I know this is hard for you people to understand, but a woman has a will and has a right to use that will when it comes to her body, pregnant or not. I find it hypocritical that many of the people that dishonestly call themselves pro-life care nothing about the women. They see them as objects, property, or incubators. They also don't care about the lives of any other children these women may have or how they will be affected by the anti-choicers' fanatical, irrational, and harmful behavior. These people seem to be blinded by their sick and twisted obsession with fetuses. She goes on. Also, stop equating pregnancy with slavery. If you believe a mother is a slave to her own child starting at pregnancy, you've got issues, and there's no point in having an exchange of ideas with you. I never said a woman is a slave to the fetus. My comment was, I do not own anyone else's body except my own. The only way I could force a woman to continue with a pregnancy, give birth, and risk her life is if I owned her or was acting as if I did. I would be saying to her, my rights over your body are greater than your rights over your own body. If that's not slavery, I don't know what is. I am not going to violate the rights of one with the excuse that I am saving the life of another that to begin with, I have no business saving. Because if that fetus is not in my body, I have no say over it. She goes on. If a woman is pregnant and doesn't want the baby, helpful places and resources are available to aid in giving up her child for adoption. If a woman wants to have the child, I'm glad there are places that can help her. If a woman does not want to have a child, I find it disturbing that anyone would want to force her to go through nine months of pregnancy, go through childbirth, and then give up that child to a total stranger and have her go through all of this because of someone else's beliefs. Just like I don't support a cow being pregnant against her will and then having her calf stolen from her, because of someone else's agenda? I would not force a woman to continue with a pregnancy and then expect her to give up that child at birth because of someone else's agenda. If I'm not gonna do it to a cow, 
I'm not gonna do it to a woman, regardless of how she got pregnant in the first place. She goes on. The majority of abortions are for convenience. I do not care if one or a billion abortions are done for convenience. Like you say, the reason for getting an abortion is irrelevant to me because it's none of my business. I don't have a say over what another woman does with her body or anything in it. If she is getting an abortion because of rape, or because her life is in danger, or because she doesn't want to have a kid, she owes me zero explanations. The uterus of another woman does not belong to me. Never has, never will. Not even the uterus of my own mother. If my mother would have decided to get an abortion and not have me, she would have had the right to do so. It was her body, and I was the intruder. For some reason, some people think that the moment a woman becomes pregnant, she loses rights over her body, and those rights are now magically transferred over to the anti-choicers. And her life and her future will now be determined by them and not her. Why anyone would still need an explanation of why this behavior is utterly immoral is beyond my comprehension. She goes on. And it's devastatingly sad that many women feel like abortion is the only answer. You have the right to feel sad and to be against abortion but you don't have the right to impose your will on somebody else because of your feelings. Yes, it's unfortunate, but for many women, abortion is the right answer, and that is why I support it. I have no intention of limiting the options for women. I want every woman to be able to choose freely what is best for her. I want each one to live according to their own conscience, not according to mine. It would be great if no woman ever had an abortion, but I don't live in freaking La La Land. I live in the real world, and I want every woman that does need or want an abortion to do so without ending up mutilated, imprisoned, or dead. Being against abortion does not stop abortions. It only causes more pain, more problems, and more deaths. I am pro-choice because it is my intention to cause less suffering for women, not more. And if this means fetuses not being born, so be it. I will choose a woman over a fetus every single time, and I won't apologize for that. Ever. She goes on. If people, women and men, took more responsibility with approaching sex and using birth control, less unwanted pregnancies would occur. I agree. I can advocate for safe sex all day long, but I am only responsible for me. I have no control over others, nor would I want it. I am not the sex police. She goes on. If abortion is about women's rights, the rights of unborn females have been completely ignored. If a fetus were pregnant, then it would have rights over its own body. But a fetus does not have rights over the body of the woman that it is inside of. A pregnant woman has the right to end a pregnancy at any time for whatever reason regardless of the gender of the fetus. If the woman wants to give birth, then that fetus has a right to life. If the woman does not want to give birth, then it does not have a right to life. The right to life of a fetus is determined by the pregnant woman alone, not by the state, the church, or anyone else. She goes on. Overall, the rights of innocent people and animals should be advocated for.
Animals are being bred into existence with the intention of being exploited, used, and eaten. And these animals are not infringing on someone else's rights or causing harm. I defend them because they are innocent. A fetus, on the other hand, does not qualify as innocent people for the reasons I've already stated. I have a video in Spanish called Un Feto No Es Inocente, A Fetus Is Not Innocent. I plan on making the English version soon, but in summary what I say is that a fetus is innocent in the sense that it did not choose to exist and it doesn't have the intention of causing harm, but it is not innocent in the sense that it can cause great harm to another, even death, and that the only person that should determine whether she wants to risk her life is the one who will be doing the risking, not anybody else. But if you think a fetus is a person, then you must treat it as such. And no person has the right to use the body of another person for his own benefit against the will of the one who is being used. If you think a fetus has the right to do such a thing just because it's a fetus, then you are granting it special rights. And I am obviously against that. She ended by saying, I could continue, but I know this would turn into a never-ending argument with you. This reply is my last to you. Cheers and goodbye. I am pro-choice because I believe it's the most responsible position to take. If a woman gets an abortion, she will have to live with the positive or negative consequences of her actions, not me. And that is how it should be. If I force her to give birth against her will, that woman and her family will have to live with the negative consequences of my actions. And I find that unacceptable, irresponsible, and immoral. I believe that there are lives that I don't have the right to take. And there are lives that I don't have the right to save. I cannot violate the rights and freedom of one with the excuse that I am saving the life of another. So I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.